Hello and welcome back to the Worley Model Railway YouTube channel. I'm Tim, some of you may know me from the scrap line. So in this video we're going to take a look at weathering this wagon here which has been made exclusively for the Model Railway Club by Backman. And what we're going to aim for is a nice faded finish, heavy use, um, general traffic grime, that sort of stuff. You could also be in for a chance to get your hands on this wagon. There'll be more information later on in the video, so stay tuned. Okay, so here we go. Let's uh, get this model out of the box and take a closer look at it. So as you can see, these are limited edition of 504, obviously in clean condition. So I'm going to make this one a little bit more exclusive and make this the one and only dirty one. So to start off with, we're going to look into uh, the faded paint effects and for everything I'm going to be using the Vallejo paint range. Start off with just some red and white and this is just mixed up uh, together just to make a nice soft pink colour. Now the aim to here is to get this on and we're going to actually dry brush this on. Uh, but we're actually not going to brush it, we're just going to go for a stipple motion as I find that that effect gives you a nice kind of worn sun bleached um, faded paint effect. Just keep working your way along the model until you've built up enough uh, contrast between its original colour. Keep on loading the brush up and uh, wiping out as much as you can. I also try to just avoid getting anything on any logos or um, important writing that's on the wagon. And if you do get anything on there, it's easily removed with just a little bit of um, acrylic thinner. Again, just covering everywhere that you can possibly get to. So any bits of raised detail that's in the red colour is also giving a quick brush over as well. So at this stage I like to seal this in and I use a automotive clear lacquer or any gloss varnish will do as well. Just getting set up ready for um, Applying the first layers of dirt and grime. I also like to get my removal aid ready, which is a mixture of uh, just two parts water to one part isopropyl alcohol. And the first paints we're going to be using up in the airbrush is um, the Vallejo Air Range, and this is the dark earth colour, just a couple of drops is really all you need. And then we're just going to give a nice light even coat all the way around. And then using something, nice flat brush, um, not particularly too stiff. Just going to get into um, into the paint that we just applied. Again, just dampen the brush with the uh, diluted mixture of isopropyl, and this will um, just help with the aid of removing the paint, and we can create some great streaks. And of course, um, start blending some of this paint down into the sort of crevices of the wagon. Again, just keep working away at it until you're uh, happy with the finish. So 
So with the first coat done, I've just put it to the side to dry for about an hour. And then we're going to move on to the second colour, which is dark brown, again from Vallejo. Again, we're going to go back into the airbrush, so just a couple of drops into the airbrush cup is all that's needed. And this will give us a nice uh, base coat for um, the tarred area, as uh, you'll often see quite a lot of oil and tar that drips down these wagons. I've adjusted the airbrush as well, just so I've got more control over how much paint flows out of this, so you end up with some nice finer lines, as opposed to being quite a wide spray. You can then sort of target areas where there's rivets and uh, hopefully weld lines on the wagon. And also just a quick pass over again, just to add another touch of variation for the shades that we're adding to the dirt and grime. This time I've gone for a slightly stiffer brush, so the solution, again, using the isopropyl, is to uh, get back in and rework this brown paint. And again, just nothing different here than the uh, first layer, we're just going to filter off this brown, try and work it into the wagon in some of the crevices and rivet lines. And you see just as the uh, as we're cleaning off in between where the uh, rivets are, sort of leave a lot of dirt trapped in, which make those sort of rivet areas pop out. Also just going to filter down where the airbrush will left um, a faint misted line where the tar streaks are, so that kind of loses that airbrush effect. And just keep working along until you're happy with uh, the finished result. So next colour up we're using NATO Black and again from the Vallejo range and the process here is pretty much similar to what we've just done with the dark brown. Again we're just going to have more control over the airbrush flow so we've uh, adjusted that adjuster on the back to control the flow so we get some nice gentle streaks. And we want to concentrate on areas of course where the tar would be heavily dripping down. So the layers are built up gradually. So just keep on building those layers up until you've uh, got a nice thick looking effect going on. And again just using the same colour to start to filter and blend together with the previous tones that we've applied. And go over the top of the wagon. And again just using the isopropyl alcohol and the uh, slightly stiffer brush. Again we can work into removing and blending those colours back in.
So the final stages of the wagon is all the uh, under frames and wheels. And we're gonna attack this with uh, three different colors. Starting with the neutral gray, some uh, dark earth, and uh, NATO black. We go back into the airbrush again, starting with the neutral grey. And uh, best to if you can get the wheels out of this stage and uh, just attack all the under frames. We want to try and aim for getting all from different angles, just make sure that uh, everything's at a nice even coat. I find the grey also adds a nice different variation of tone and works really well in contrast to all the uh, dirt colours so it's a good shade to use as um, coat number one for all your underframes and of course all the wheels will get all the same colours as well so no need to wait for uh, anything to completely cure we're going to go straight in now with the dark earth colour and again just attacking this, you don't really want to cover too much of the grey, so you want to try and sort of see that slight contrast, so it only takes a few quick passes. Now we're into the uh, final colour of the black and uh, a bit more controlled with this one so we've uh, again adjusted that uh, trigger at the back where we can reduce the flow of paint and uh, to target the areas of um, where you typically would see some oil or grease. My nice little final touch, I like to use a bit of satin uh, varnish, which is from Humberol. And this has been thinned slightly. I do like to thin this stuff as it's quite gloopy. And I think the satin as well, um, not so harsh as the gloss one. I'm going to use this now just to enhance the tar and give it a very slight sheen. And there we go, there's the finished results. Hopefully the video's given you some inspiration or a few hints and tips just to have a go at some weathering for yourself.